sounds of Armando Gutierrez on Morning Becomes Eclectic. You know, I, I have to ask you this because we watch you two performing and I noticed, I was counting intentionally, I didn't see one time that you two looked at each other in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to call it a musical conversation? It's musical connection that we have. We're brothers and we, we just feel each other and it's beautiful to have that gift. Yeah. Is there ever times where you feel like friction or like because you're brothers? Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think that's that's part of a relationship. Uh, we go through phases where we get along, or we just need our space. But I think at the end, we're just brothers, and we do something that we love, and it's music and playing it together. So we just feel blessed to be here. I have to ask you this: What were you two like as kids? Like, what were you into? Was it always music, or was there something else? Oh, we were both uh, soccer players. <laughs> yeah, football. Yeah, so that was our thing. But um, I'm happy we changed it to music. I think it has more meaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. We're going to get into your next cut. Yeah, the next, next song is called Tres Hermanos, and we wrote that song with Dan Auerbach from the Black Keys, and here it goes. Yeah. 
Hermanos Gutierrez on Morning Becomes Eclectic. If you're listening at home or in the car, you are witnessing magic, no doubt. Tell me, speaking of magic, Nashville, recording that in Nashville, how much did that environment play into your sound and did it inspire you? Yeah, it was uh, such a beautiful experience. I mean, it was the first time that we ever worked with a guy, uh, with a producer, and it was um, straight away with a high profile 
person Dan Arbuck. And I remember the first 30 minutes we were in that studio where I think we just um, found the sound in those first minutes because I saw Dan like putting um, some stuff on that old um, amplifier that we were using, like just adjusting. And I think it was just special to see him respecting us in so, so many ways. And we always could be just their manos. And yeah, we're brothers now with him, so it's cool. Were there any challenges or was it just all organic and magic? Well, it was really magical in Nashville. I mean, that studio is just amazing. And as my brother already mentioned, uh, Dan is incredible. And yeah, it was a beautiful experience. And um, we're so happy with that album, El Bueno El Malo. And we, we can't wait to go back to Nashville. One last question before you get into your next cut. Who's the better soccer player? <laughs> he is. Yeah. That's a good answer. <laughs> cool. That song was called La Verdad. It, wa it was the first time that we ever played that song in front of people. Thank you so much for having this special moment with us. It was so beautiful. I want to go back to, I understand there's a story that Dan Auerbach saw a video of you in like 15 seconds, knew he wanted to work with you. Is that true? Yes, apparently it's, uh, it's the truth. Um, so... Our management, which is based in LA, showed the video to Tom Osborne. He's the uh, manager of Easy Eye Sound, and he showed it 
the video to Dan and it was like this, like uh, <laughs> he just saw it and he closed the laptop and he was like, yeah, we have to have a call with those guys. And that was it. Then we had a Zoom conversation maybe two weeks after that and it was another quick call and it was just like straight away we had good vibes only and we knew we wanted to create an uh, album together. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the cinematic feel here. I mean, it's clear that there's elements, it, spaghetti western, I'm sure you hear that all the time, but it, how much has cinema played a factor in inspiration in your sound? Is it an inspiration? I mean, a lot. I, I love movies so much and especially like the works that uh, did Sergio Leone and um, Ennio Morricone or Alejandro Iñárritu, the Mexican director with Gustavo Santaolalla. And it's always been a big inspiration. But I think it was never our intention to create something which is cinematic. I think it found us. So that's quite special. And we always knew we had bad voices. We're not going to sing. <laughs> so uh, it's, I think it's what it is, you know? I don't know. In 2023, <laughs> I feel like there are a lot, a lot of bad people with bad voices making music. <laughs> I think you guys can give it a shot. I'm sure it'll be great. Maybe next time. Cool. <laughs> Let's get into your next cut, Hermano Scutierrez on Morning Becomes Eclectic. Yeah, this song is called uh, Thunderbird. Gracias, thank you. Hermanos Gutierrez on Morning Becomes Eclectic. I read somewhere that Thunderbird is a very special song for you two. Uh, what is that reason, if you don't mind me asking? I'm curious. The Thunderbird is a mystical animal, and uh, it was always like the symbol for us that protected us and guided us in our, in our 
journey that we had as brothers and uh, as musicians and it just stands for this energy and protection and yeah also this the song itself sends a lot of good vibes and energy and power so we love to play that song yeah. Yeah. also i know you two are big music fans from salsa the classics to mm. soul yeah. but also outcast oh yeah <laughs> talk about your love for outcast um it's a funny story um, when i was 15 i heard um that song um 80 aliens it's called, cool, right and um i'm a big older so um I remember I, I, I did a mixtape with just that song on it. So I went out with some friends and I had, yeah, I have an, a nice mixtape. And we started listening. And after the second song, it was always like the same song. No? And they were asking, is another song coming? And I was like, no, I like this song. So that was my <laughs> special outcast mixtape. And uh, I love that song. And, and so is that the, one song on repeat? Yeah, of course. As the mixtape? I mean, of course. Yeah. I love that. But, yeah. That's cool, breaking yeah. the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you, because you two are based in Zurich, but have roots in Ecuador. What's it like existing in two different worlds? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Sometimes it's kind of hard, because you, you never feel like at home. You're at the, when, I, when we were young, we were in Ecuador, and we missed kind of Switzerland, and then we were back, and we missed Ecuador. So you're always in between two worlds, which can be great. But sometimes it's also hard. You you can feel the the nostalgia in our music, and I think that has to do because we always lived in in two worlds. Yeah. When you go home to Ecuador, there must be lots of love. Your family must be yeah. so excited to see you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Our grandfather was a big inspiration for so for our music, and he passed away six years ago, and that was a really sad moment. He never saw us playing. He he, he doesn't know that we are doing that as, a, as brothers, but I think he, he will be so proud to, to see what we achieved. Clearly you two are talented, and the brotherly love is there, the family love. What was his inspiration? He was the one that showed us that showing feelings is okay. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to have this, yeah, this, this pressure sometimes on your heart. It's okay to cry, even as a man. He was the first man that we saw that was crying because he was um, happy and also sad, you know. So he showed us some music, uh, Julio Jaramillo from the 50s. There's one song, it's called Nuestro Juramento, and he, he showed us that song and he started to cry and it was beautiful. So when we started to do and play music, we always wanted to like to to touch the feelings, the hearts, los almas, and that's that's what we try to do. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that you're definitely touching our hearts today and this morning. Um, the next song you're going to get into is Pablo Man, is that correct? I understand that this one's inspired by an experience that you had. Yes, um, I have a friend who's from New Mexico and he's Native American from the Jemez Pueblo and I stayed there at his family's place for three days. And it was exactly the time where they do the ditch work, like the whole community. And I remember I was there at their ho house and it was on a Sunday morning that uh, his father had a speech with the Native American community like about the responsibility of doing that ditch work. And at the end of that speech, he said, like, you, you have to be here because you're a Pueblo man. And it just, yeah, it was a powerful moment. And it inspired us to write this song about him. And, yeah, I think we love this song a lot. Great. Let's hear it. So, Romanos Gutierrez on Morning Becomes Eclectic. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Hermanos Gutierrez, definitely bringing their magic here to the KCRW studios. Before we get into the last song, I have to ask you this as well. Um, we're loving the record. What do you hope that folks take away when they listen? What do you hope they leave with after listening to the record? I just think having their own personal experience, like um, that's what we like about instrumental music. I think it just leaves that space for everyone. You know, you can put whatever you want, and it's a privilege for us to be there in that moment. And I think. Um, if I got to know that someone is listening to our music like right now in this moment and someone else in a different part, I, like it's everything I can wish for. I mean, we can be there, but we're not, you know, and I think that's it. Well, it's a privilege for us to witness your magic. Thank you for coming to KCRW. We got one more for you. Hermanos Gutierrez on Morning Becomes Eclectic. Yeah, the next song is called El Desierto. And it's a beautiful landscape that's always been inspiring us. Whenever we go there, we come back and we write new stuff and we just like the desert. Thank you so much for having us at KCRW. You're amazing and we hope to be back. Thank you. <laughs> 